you know, of course it remains hidden, <laughs> not not come to the forefront in this game. This is a blitz or a long game? This is a long game, long game. yeah. <clears throat> so it was a game 90. So my opponent plays this line with queen takes d4. Okay, so we play a6, one of the possible moves. He takes it into a Maroxy bind pawn structure. It's like different moves here. I mean, even instead of c4, I think they have like h3, and then they bring the queen back here. It's different ways to play this, but he plays in a reasonable way. g6. This move h3 is like prophylaxis against all these bishop g4 ideas. Bishop g7, knight c3, knight of 6 bishop g3. And now, of course, you know, castles is sort of automatic, right? But, you know, besides castling, we also still need to have a plan. And I thought, well, what can we do that's more useful than castling? Maybe we can just stop. We can use the tempo for something more useful. And I decided to immediately start, like, on the transfer of this knight uh, to c5. So he goes b3. I played knight c5. And he goes bishop b2. So I gotta say, I was a little surprised that you know my opponent was not trying to keep this bishop at all. And of course, he's not such an essential bishop like the dark squared bishop is. You know, he's the relatively bad one. But on the other hand, you know, when um, you have a space advantage, you don't want to allow a peace trade. So I was kind of surprised that he let me take this bishop so easily. Although at this moment, he doesn't actually um, well have a great way to save him, I guess. I mean, Bishop C, Bishop can't play Bishop E2, and uh, Queen Bishop C2 is pretty, pretty awkward. I think. Um, you know, I think we can just like, immediately start this undermining play on the Queen side. So he didn't really have a way to save the Bishop at this point. Uh, so he just develops. So I took it. I was happy trading pieces with space disadvantage. Seems like a good idea. And castle, castle, and then I, I know I had foreseen that I was going to have another move that seems to fit into my my uh, general plans. Um, that was the move b5. So you know, small calculation involved in this move, just enough to see that you know we're not losing a pawn for free because we got that skewer. And you know, when he takes our knight, in the end we also have. Another skewer. And we win the knight on c3. So once I saw that, I knew I could, you know, play b5. I have to say, I was like very optimistic about my position. Maybe um, wrongly so optimistic. And I thought, okay, I traded off his bishop, and now I'm undermining the space advantage. I mean, so now what we're supposed to do in these positions is like the dream is to play b5 or d5. So then my opponent took and played queen uh, d2. So this was probably the hardest moment of the game for me. And I sat here thinking for like 25 minutes. So why was this such a difficult moment? Well, that's because I couldn't figure out how to stop my opponent's plan of playing knight d5. That was why he played queen d2. He's just stepping back to like protect the bishop, stepping out of the skewer. And it's actually a very, very fine reaction on his part. And uh, I just really wanted to play this move, like, because it's a prophylactic move against knight d5. Because then I could trade queens and uh, win his bishop. But unfortunately, this move just doesn't work so well tactically because of this move. And I just have problems with the hanging pieces on the a file. I mean, playing b4 is just not not the dream. I mean, right? Like, why did I give my opponent a protected pass pawn and the knight in the center and the trading of the bishops? And, you know, at some point, like, if you're just left with this bishop on the board, you don't have the bishop pair advantage anymore, um, why would you be better? So, really, really hard moment for me just to see, like, where to steer the game. Also, it took me, like, even though sometimes I kept thinking I have to protect this pawn, right? Actually, then I realized I didn't. Because if he takes it, there's still bishop a6, and I'll be able to get it back. So that help, helped me make, like, a reasonable move here. So when I finally ran out of, like, all my dream options, which I realized didn't work, I played this move. Yeah. It was actually, yeah, it was um, 
the right move. Every time he takes, you know, I can take on b2, play bishop a6, and I'll eventually get that pawn back. Um, and what was my idea? Well, knight d5. That's really the move that I was afraid of. And my plan in this position was actually to take and play this move. E5. So why E5? Well, uh, I have no other way to challenge this knight. Sorry about that. That's okay. Yeah, I mean, he, he has this really strong knight on D5. Hard to hard to get rid of it. Uh, I can never play E6, right? Because he can't let the knight into F6. So I was going to go E5, and I thought, okay, I'll play this position. I didn't think this was amazing for me, but I saw some ideas of knight E7 challenging the knight, and maybe F5 eventually. Um, and yeah, the computer evaluates this as equal, so it's like a reasonable continuation for black. Although he also suggests some quite strange things that, I mean, I've certainly noticed this move, um, but I would say it's not very intuitive to like take on the double pawns and block in your own bishop. But the computer says this is also an acceptable way of playing. I mean, maybe, first of all, the idea, I guess, is just b6. Yeah, it's also kind of an equalish position. Um, but he made me happy here by not going knight d5. He played rook c1, so I was just thrilled. Because now we can play what? E6. E6? Uh, that's interesting, but I think he wants to take this pawn now. You see, now his rook's not in that pin, on that diagonal, so we have to actually be a little careful with that pawn. Otherwise, E6 is it's always an interesting move. Later on in the game, I played that. So which move do we really want to play? Remember? We said it was like the dream. Queen a5? Queen a5, right. So queen a5 protects the pawn on b5, and it stops this move. So important to look, not let your opponent activate their pieces and take up such beautiful positions. Yeah. So I felt like now, you know, things were, you know, under control. He played this move, you know, and that move, you know, I had seen, of course, before, you know, one move earlier, right, when my bishop was still here. And so I was definitely familiar with all kinds, you know, I just wanted to show you, when I considered this move here, and I was afraid of that move, I looked at so many um, moves here, like where I'm involving the sacrifice uh, of this pawn, and like that, and, you know, just trying to, sorry, don't need to. Yeah, um, you know, involving playing against like these pawns and like this. But after this move, I didn't see what I could do. I mean, I have this little move, queen d4, you know, it's a trade of queens and knights. But I realized like it wasn't going to be anything great for me. So I kind of had to abandon played, this line. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, Go ahead. Could you not have played uh, bishop h3 there? Uh, here, interesting. Yeah, here, I think there's the problem is there's a lot of issues with like this type of move. Yeah, there's also rook a4, which is just like super unpleasant, right? It just kicks out the queen and protects the knight. There's a lot of threats. So I'm just showing this line, guys, because like I was very aware of all the tactical possibilities um, with this queen a5 move and like what to do when they played a4. Um, and I Played, so I played bishop b7. Oops. Rook c1. And so when my opponent played here, it really shouldn't have been so hard for me to like navigate this position and to think a little bit more um, and find a move like knight e5. I mean, it's really not a very difficult move. The idea is I'm stopping them from ever taking with the knight. They're going to like have to trade. They still can take with the knight, they can take with the pawn. And it's very similar to like things that I've always seen in my calculations, except it's just a better version. 
like here I'm going to eventually win the B3 pawn, and I, mean, I would certainly be happy as black here, you know, with chances to play for a win, you know, bishop here. He still, very importantly, my opponent still just cannot get that knight there comfortably. Okay. But you see, I've, also, I've noticed that sometimes what happens is like when I know my opponent has made a kind of an accuracy or mistake, <coughs> um, surprisingly, I often answer with a mistake. Even though I understood <laughs> that their move was a mistake. Like, it's maybe from like the happiness, the relief, because I was relieved by rook c1, right? I was relieved that I had a chance to play my queen out here. And I knew this wasn't scary for me. Like, I knew a4 here was not as strong as it was in the previous move. So I didn't like uh, try hard enough to, you know, find the best move here. I just took the pawn. And I thought, okay, this is, obviously it's a lot better than all the lines where my rook was hanging on A. So this must be acceptable for me. All right, now I played queen D6. I have to say I had no inkling of like the danger in this position. Just not a hint. I mean, I thought, well, I have pretty decent piece coordination, king safety, everything is okay. I'm attacking this pawn. Why should it be so bad? Um, of course, in hindsight, maybe I would have been more careful and should bring the queen back to d8 much more sound. But I just didn't realize we were going to have a problem here. So, the first question is what does white need to look at here? Any sort of guess as to you know where you should spend your energy at which direction mm, the pawn which black is threatening on b3 oh well, sure so the pawn is being threatened that's true but what should white be thinking about doing i mean 95 seems to jump down yeah so that's you know guys before we do anything to just defend and chess right we have to think about attacking that's why we said the first step in the thinking process is our own force equals checks, captures, and threats. So white has to focus on that move because it's their active move, right? Even if it lets uh, black take the pawn. Yeah, so not try to pull up with an exchange sack. In yeah, so this was the key position. And in this position, I did notice a little problem. Like, I noticed that my opponent has this kind of cool idea in 97. With the idea of this double attack. That made me quite unhappy because I was gonna, you know, I lost a really important pawn on e7 and now I'm gonna lose an extra piece. And I mean, in the best case, I'm gonna be able to make a draw here. I should be able to make a draw, but no real winning chances. So, I mean, I kind of, I was really just hoping, well, maybe he wouldn't see that 97. I mean, there's some complexity there. It's a little bit unusual, this word before idea. But when I was looking at this with the computer, he showed another move. He showed this move and says, white's winning. So I was like, wow, winning. That's, that's powerful. For a position like, you look at this position from black, it doesn't look like it should be, like it's not like black is a total disaster of harmony or peace coordination. Um, so white offers a rook sack. And I sat there for a long time uh, without looking at the actual move, trying to understand, well, why is this losing for black? Okay, well, we've got to take the rook because right now our queen and bishop are under attack. We've got to take it. 97. So still, why is this losing? Queen h6. Right, queen h6 is one of the moves, but they just take on b2 oh, right. <laughs> with the queen, right? Yeah, you're right. You can't take with the bishop because knight g5 is made. So I was look, I was thinking about that, but unfortunately on queen h6, you know, I think just queen takes. Now, well, white's just losing the queen. Then, so I looked at that check, trying to calculate the checks, and, and then I saw a draw. I was like, okay, knight of five, white can make a draw, give away the knight, queen g5 is a kind of a perpetual, but not more. So why is white winning this? There's this amazing, amazing move. Yes, knight d4. And I mean, just, Incredible how these knights cover the board. This queen has like no retreats this way. The white's down a whole rook. Black's king is like safe behind three pawns. And black is just completely lost because they cannot stop this knight's act, leading to mate. So like that. So at some point, 
the black pawn is going to have to take that knight, and then queen g5, queen f6 is made. Well, let's see. Can we walk out this way? I guess not. There's going to be some kind of queen d4, or maybe even better, queen c3. Or, wait, queen four, queen d6, so I'm queen d6. Queen d6, there's queen e6. So there's probably no point in that. But I have a feeling like that one, that one, we can we can hunt down this king, can't we? I think so. There's a lot of pieces on the hunt. Well, that's a pretty pawn checkmate. And this way, I think once we once we get him there, once we get him there. The rook gets the open file. Uh, this should be good. Yeah. I mean, these are like the details. It's pretty clear, like, once the king has to come out to f6, like, the game's going to end. Um, king h8? Mm, okay, let's try to find the checkmate here. Because on um, this move, in h6, well, we know we can't take the knight. That was the checkmate I was talking about. What about that? What was wrong with queen g4 instead of queen h6? Probably, uh, there was, I was trying to play f6, I think. Go back. Yeah. King h8? Yeah, king h8, queen d4. Queen d4. There's F6, right? Let's go back one move. Let's try to find it. It's kind of a nice little challenge. Oh, maybe like G6. Knight g6. And Either queen, queen d6 or queen d4. Well, yeah. We're, not. We're gonna have to. Queen d4. Yes. Ah, nice checkmate. Knight h6. There we go. Very pretty. Or queen g7. Yeah. Or queen g7. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there. Ah, so it's like that. It actually just continues to be really pretty. That's quite nice. Yeah, can't really. Try to hold on like that, yeah. Okay. So that was how I could have lost, you know, and I would say that's a bit of a it's kind of a rarity in chess when you can lose when you're like not even expecting there's a problem, right? Because I just had no idea that my position was like losable on this move. I saw that you know you can play knight d5 and make a draw, but um, but I didn't. I certainly didn't think that. Uh, there was like that kind of rook sacrifice lurking in the air, but it's a very, very pretty line. Um, but that shows you, you know, guys, that of course, what, what mistake I made. Like, why, why am I activating my opponent's pieces? I guess that's really the question. I try to be careful with that. That's really the, the mistake of the move B takes A4 is that like I'm activating the rook, giving him a tempo on the queen. And yes, of course, it's not losing for white, you know, for black. You know, black can play queen D8, it's still, uh, you know, very solid for black positionally, right? But um, just one more misstep, and then she could actually use these active pieces. So, yes, I was quite lucky here, guys, that he uh, decided to go passive. You know, passivity is not a strategy that pays in chess. And every moment that you have an active move, you got to uh, really focus your energies on making it work, even if it implies like, some material sacrifice. Because queen d1... Um, it's just not not the right direction. And, you know, White's not going to get a second chance to just put that knight on d5, right? Because now we kind of open up our um, our bishop and we start targeting this pawn. Okay, eventually I won the game. It actually ended kind of in a pretty way. I'll just show you. Um, oh yeah. Well, I did play this move e6. I was kind of happy with that. I was like, no more knight d5. Gonna take that square away. So there was a little bit more of that piece restriction going on in this game. Um, but once black arrived here, of course, black is very close to winning because white is just, you know, black's bishops are too powerful. That was kind of my 
the, the dream going back to the beginning that I would keep both bishops. And, uh, and of course, now the board is pretty open. So very hard for white to survive this. And I just kind of had to be kind of careful here. Okay, improving power of the pieces. And then he played here, he was in time trouble. It looked like a move that wasn't changing very much. But then I tried this formula again, you know, checks, captures, and threats. I was like, ah, this move works pretty well now. And yeah, I got this nice row of pieces on the fourth rank. Um, so the idea is that he actually stepped into that check. And then loses the rook on c2, and the discovery is not so dangerous because here the king can go to h8, and this bishop's actually trapped. I was planning on this move to actually just trap him like that. And everywhere he goes, there's a check on the back rank. But um, yeah, that's an example, guys, of a game where things can uh, go wrong when you get a little bit, uh, a little bit, you know, lazy about uh, calculating the variations, and you just give your opponent's pieces a little bit too much activity. So it could have ended quite badly. And you found that position later? Yeah, of course. That night, that rook before move, I mean, I was shocked when the computer yeah. shows me like plus five. And I really sat there trying to understand why, you know, because I didn't just want to look at the line and I looked at it and I just, you know, I couldn't see because that knight d4 move is not so obvious. Like the way that knight comes into the game, the idea of preparing the sack is really just kind of special. And I don't know how strong your player you need to be to like find that. Because that just, it was so far from like what I was able to see. Yeah. Right. I mean, what's tricky about it is that usually, um, Usually, like attacks like that work against a position where you can like clearly see, perceive like a lack of harmony. But the black's position didn't seem like so helpless. It wasn't like my king was uncovered and bare. Like all my pieces had no coordination. It wasn't like well, it didn't have those warning signs. Yep. So I just was completely unsuspecting about that. All right, let's try. Okay, so we've talked about the prophylactic idea, uh, mindset in chess, and. The third element, this element of harmony and um, the pieces. So this game kind of illustrated that. It's also something very recent that I played. I was playing a um, young girl. I'm sure you guys have uh, heard of her, um, Annie Wang. Um, she almost won the US Women's Championship a couple of years ago. So I played her in this tournament in Berkeley. And I definitely did not want a repeat of my game with her from a few years ago in the U.S. Women's Championship, where I had a close to winning position and I uh, wound up losing. But amazingly, that almost happened again in this game. Like, I didn't want it to happen. It almost happened. I learned my lesson. I did. Like, no, no more time trouble. You know, you anything can happen in time, time trouble. So... Um, here we go. I was white, playing this Kali system. That was something I had had in mind, especially for this game. Her? I really yeah. not on this one. Oh, nothing is moving, yeah. <laughs> Very exciting lecture. Or is not. <laughs> All right, one show chance. Okay, yeah, yeah, one second, second, I think. Oh, I get it, I get it. So it's like this tricky three-way thing. Here we go. Yeah, here we go. So she plays the Nimzo Indian, d4, e6, knight of three, knight of six, e3. Well, wow. yeah, this line is, it's a little bit like the ready opening, right? It's like, it doesn't have, not so principled, but it's got its own positional ideas and it's got some bite. And in this game, in fact, I got an advantage out of the opening pretty, um, pretty easily. So b3 is a move that's meant to stop c4. White can castle, but then black can play c4. It's a line. You know, when I played her in the blitz playoff, she kind of improved on her opening play, and uh, she captured uh, on d4. In this game, she you know, wasn't really prepared, so she just made this natural move, bishop d6. It's, not, it's hard to imagine that move is a mistake, but it actually is. A bit of an inaccuracy because White trades, black loses the tempo, and we are heading for this position. Uh, 
Okay, well, white, I just decided to get the queen out of the way, but of course, you know, c4 is the main idea. So you play queen c7, c4, rook d8, and rook c1. So like some very, very 